Today I'm doing something a little bit different. Looking back at Battlefield 5 and what it potentially could have been. I was searching the internet the other day for some interesting facts on Battlefield, stuff to post on Twitter and maybe share with you on my YouTube channel. And I came across this really interesting post from Jason Schofield. Now he worked for DICE back in the day, he's got a history of working for different companies, he's a very talented person, but this you're about to see was created on his own, it's got nothing to do with Battlefield, it's got nothing to do with EA, he just created it on his own back as sort of a side project. Now I've included the link for it down below, there are of course some still images that you will see on my Twitter channel, I'll include obviously stuff in the background for this video, but if you want to just explore it yourself, there is a link in the description and it's really, really interesting. Now this is what he thought Battlefield 5 could be, essentially he'd call it Battlefield 2 as we move on from Battlefield 1 in a logical order. Yes, there was a previous Battlefield 2 and some people might think we shouldn't reuse the names, but to be honest, Battlefield 5 is a fairly misleading title name for a World War II game. Battlefield V, V for victory, Battlefield 5 because it came after Battlefield 4, but we just had Battlefield 1. I feel as if a lot was lost in translation there, so Battlefield 2 would have been maybe a more fitting title for the game. Now straight away what stands out to me is what we see in the background. We've got troops here that look like they're straight out of Saving Private Ryan. Obviously DICE would have to set up their own background images and you'll see that a lot through this concept but I feel as if that certainly grabs me far more than what we currently see on Battlefield 5 and if we compare the two images I'm pretty certain most people if not all people will say that the image on the left Battlefield 2 definitely stands out more. Now as we scroll down and I'm doing this live just so you get an understanding of what I'm seeing at the same time as making your own opinions, we get a little intro to what Battlefield 2 is all about. And this is similar to what we saw with Battlefield 5, but this one really focuses on the unbreakable brotherhood of common men fighting to preserve freedom in a world on the brink of tyranny. That is exactly what World War 2 was all about. It's not these unseen and unheard battles, which can be interesting, but for the most part, people want to see the iconic locations and that's what he says here. Iconic locations, new weapons, vehicles, game modes, and unmatched destruction. That would have sold far more copies just off that description, I'm pretty certain. You wouldn't have to go into anything more detailed than that. That hooks me in straight away. And to be honest, if DICE made a game that was coming out next year called Battlefield 2, and they almost said we're going to have another crack at World War 2, and this was the title that they went with, with that description, I'd probably be quite excited, even if it was World War II all over again. They won't do that, and yes, it'll probably be a modern warfare-style game, but that would be cool, and I'm pretty certain you'll all agree. Scrolling down a bit more, we see some information on the classes. Assault, Medic, Support, and Recon. I absolutely love the way he's got these little GIFs. Really cool that you kind of understand what your class is going to be good at, and they're all promoting this team play, especially the support class, as you watch in the background, people working together to fire mortars from positions of cover. Medic running around trying to protect people, and you'll probably recognize where that's from in Band of Brothers. And then, of course, the assault as well, working as a team behind vehicles. We haven't seen this sort of vehicle combat in Battlefield 5 but it's clear this is what people want. Now, if you click on each of these, this is the really cool thing. You get a bit of information on the class. The soldiers straight away stand out to me as perfect World War II soldiers. Weapons, keeping it simple, obviously at this stage, it's just a concept. You've got your weapons and your gadgets, some of which we haven't even seen in Battlefield 5 a year down the line. Now, I find that really interesting. Scrolling down, it gets even better. And I'm not sure really on the historical accuracy of the locations and the time period in which these battles happened, but I really do like the idea of moving across Europe with a map to indicate where you're going. And this really links into the grand operations and what DICE really want to do with Battlefield, it seems, over BF1 and BF5, following battles logically and chronologically through history. Now, starting out here, there's something that really stands out to me. We're seeing iconic battles straight away. What this does to me as a fan is it makes me think, wow, 
I'm going to be playing this. I'm going to be playing almost a Hollywood movie, but I'm in control. It's a game that I can really get into, and straight away I'm familiar with it. And I do see what DICE want to do with these unseen battles. They want to promote things that maybe haven't been showcased through history, and maybe they could be and should be, but it's a video game that people want to engage with. And I think you have to strike a balance between these famous and iconic battles if you're then going to input some other things that we really haven't heard of too much. So the stage is set for Operation Overlord, Omaha Beach, and the Allied invasion of Normandy. This would be an incredible battlefield moment, linking straight in to saving Private Ryan. And as you see on the right hand side, the map kind of shows as we scroll down where you'd be moving. Let's just ignore the fact that with MG42 sitting in those bunkers, it would probably be a horrible Rush or Grand Ops game mode, especially Breakthrough. But it could be quite cool if DICE balanced it properly. Moving on, we've got the Battle of Bloody Gulch. The objective of attacking American forces is to consolidate the US beachheads and establishment of a defensive line against German counterattacks. The defending German force must hold the city long enough to allow reinforcements en route from the south to arrive and keep the US First Army from launching an attack. Again, some placeholder images. It just looks really cool. The Ardennes, the German army must commence a massive counterattack against a thin spot in the Allied front. And we move through, and it just keeps on going. And we move into Germany. I think this is absolutely insane. Like that as a set of maps that the game comes out with, how cool would that be? And I really feel as if Dice missed a trick with this sort of approach. What I love about this concept as well is that vehicles are clearly at the forefront of this discussion. Vehicles are massive in Battlefield and they were huge in the Second World War. This is what we needed to see. At the minute, vehicles, well, we don't really see too much of them in Battlefield 5. There are a few tanks, a few planes, but plane combat's quite poor, let's be honest, compared to previous jet gameplay in Battlefield 3 and 4. Tanks are everywhere, but they tend to camp. Naval warfare is nowhere to be seen. I think having more is what everyone wanted to see with Battlefield 5 and it really didn't hit the spot with vehicles and this being on the front page clearly saying that light tanks to land ships, motorcycles, we're going to have lots of variety, battles at sea where you'll be able to captain agile torpedo boats and an armoured landing craft and then if you take to the sky you've got a load of air vehicles. That's what I was hoping for with BF5, unfortunately it didn't really capture any of that and in the background you've got Images from Fury, not exactly historically accurate movie, but definitely fun to watch. And then, of course, you've got Dunkirk as well. Again, questionable with its historical accuracy, but really good fun to watch. So let me know what you think of this down in the comments. It's completely off the cuff, this. I've just seen it on Twitter, and I thought I'd share it with you on YouTube. It's never going to happen. It's definitely a concept that was created before Battlefield 5 came out. DICE didn't really take any of it into account it wasn't done for dice or for ea it was just jason's concept i love it if this was what we were given maybe for the next battlefield game a page like this to get the hype going i feel as if everyone would really just go with it and trust what dice were doing especially if they focused on those iconic battles if you're going to do a historic title they won't though they'll go for something modern that gives them a bit more freedom Good golly. thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video.